I am about to show you exactly how you can create your very own custom grainy Photoshop brush. By the end of this tutorial, you will learn how to create a brush that looks something like this, allowing you to go from this to this. And if I zoom in here, you'll see that beautiful, gritty, grainy texture. Now, before I get started, hi, I'm Natasha. I'm an illustrator and educator, and you can find me on TikTok and Instagram at Natashka. I'm kind of new to YouTube, still testing out the waters. So if you want to see more illustration tutorials, tri tricks and tips, be sure to subscribe so I know that there are people out there who want and enjoy this content. So I know whether I should actually keep this up or not. Okay, so now let's dive in back into the tutorial. First things first, you want to create a new document in Photoshop. For this, uh, 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels will be absolutely fine. Select 72 pixels per inch resolution and you should be good to go. So create a new layer and using any bright color, we're going to create some guidelines. The first one is going to show us the outer bounds of our brush. And this is just to make sure that our brush doesn't end up looking boxy or misshapen. And the way that I'm going to do this is just by using the elliptical marquee tool and then applying a stroke. Uh, do that by going up to edit, selecting stroke, and five pixels should be fine for this. And then I'm just going to create another smaller circle inside of that. Uh, this is just to show where the most dense concentrated part of our brush will be. And don't worry too much about the positioning of these circles. These are just super rough guidelines. Okay, so now that we have those, what we wanna do is create a new layer, select the brush tool, and make sure that our, br that our brush color is set to black. And then select a brush that has a hard edge. So I'm going to be using the hard round pressure size brush. And we want to decrease the brush size. And now I'm going to go down to about 16 pixels. And I'm just going to start placing down dots using, um, I guess, focusing most on that area within the smaller uh, guide circle. And so now I'm decreasing the brush size even more to around 10 and adding more and more dots. And once again, dropping the size further down to six pixels and adding more dots. So you can see where we're starting to go with this, right? I'm also going to start to extend where I'm applying that dots out to that larger circle guide we have. Also, as a side note, because I know people will ask, I'm just using my Mac keyboard and trackpad to create all of this. Um, no graphics tablet or iPad necessary, but you could definitely use them too if you like. Now, I've been creating these dots for a while now. Um, if I turn off my red guides, here is how it's looking. Not bad, right? But we are not there yet. Now, because we want to work smarter, not harder, what we can do now is just duplicate our layer which you can do by grabbing your layer and dragging it down to the duplicate button at the bottom of our layers panel. And then just rotate this layer a little. Um, and you can see how it's already starting to look so much more dense and filled in. And the cool thing is that we can just do this again, rotate a little, uh, even decrease the size if we like. And really we can just do this as many times as we like. And you can really start to see how our brush is starting to come together. Now, just to keep things neat, we can merge all of those dot layers. Um, just make sure that you're not accidentally merging the guide circle in there too. Now, if I turn off my guides and take a look at my brush, I feel like it's starting to look a little too concentrated in that middle area. So I'm just going to go in and add more dots here and there just to try and make things feel more diffused and gradual, if that makes sense. And once again, I'm going to duplicate my layers a few more times to help build everything out a little more. And I'm sure by now you're starting to see that this is not an exact science, which is actually pretty cool if you think about it. It means that everyone's brushes are going to be slightly different and unique. Now, after I go ahead and merge these layers, I want to do one thing that will help the brush feel a little more smooth and diffused. Basically, what you wanna do is duplicate one last time, and on that bottom layer, you wanna turn down the opacity. And on the top layer, you wanna rotate it and make it slightly smaller. And also, um, in the end, I just put that bottom layer down to 30% uh, opacity, but just follow what looks good and feels right for you. And that is your brush. Now, to save it, you wanna go up to Edit and scroll down to Define Brush Preset, name your layer, and that's it, your brush is good to go. Now, if I hide these layers just for a second, this is how your brush should look like at this point. 
Pretty cool, huh? Now, just to demonstrate this brush in action, here is an illustration that I drew up in Adobe Illustrator and brought into Photoshop. Basically, if you just save your Illustrator file as a uh, PSD document, you should be able to open it up in Photoshop to edit. I have a whole bunch of tutorials on my YouTube channel showing step-by-step -step how this is done, so check that out if you need to. But essentially, you can just start applying that grainy brush that you just created to build up shading and dimension in your illustration. So here is the before and after, showing that new grainy brush we just created in use. Look how lovely that grainy detail is once we zoom in. Now, that's all there is. Thank you so much for listening to the end. If you want to learn how to package and sell your custom Photoshop brushes um, to make some passive income, please let me know. If enough people comment that they want a tutorial about that, I will definitely create that for you. So thanks again for watching. I'm Natasha, your digital illustration teacher. I'll see you over in the next tutorial. Bye for now.